This is what we wake up to every morning. Oh my gosh. Wait, get, get out of here. We're staying on the Gulf Shore on Brazo County Beach, which is the free camping portion of Surfside Beach near Freeport, Texas. Yeah, and it's a unique experience because we've never stayed on a beach before. And there's definitely some pros and cons to living on the beach, especially <laughs> in an RV. So we've made a list for you. We've got eight pros and five cons. So the first pro is a pretty obvious one. It's the sound of the waves and the water. It is incredibly soothing, especially waking up to it every morning. You wake up and you just hear the waves and the wind and it, it's very soothing and it's absolutely beautiful. You look out at the water and it's just incredibly pretty. And falling asleep to the sound of the waves is really nice too. It's yeah. like white noise in the background. It's wonderful. Yeah. Pro number two is that there's a constant breeze, especially on hot days. Today the high is 80, so the breeze feels amazing. And with our RV facing the water, basically, the breeze blows in through our windows really nicely. Helps cool it down really well. Another pro for us is just the wildlife on the beach. There's all kinds of birds, pelicans, um, seagulls, and these other little birds that are constantly combing the beaches. Um, there's monarch butterflies constantly flying around and there are these neat little crabs just <laughs> all over the beach and they make these little holes that they live in and we've probably got 20 or so of these holes surrounding the RV <laughs> and they're called Atlantic ghost crabs and they're really funny they'll pop out of their hole with just like clutching just a, a claw full of dirt and then they'll just chuck it and it then, is so cute yeah and then <laughs> either scamper back into their hole really quick or they'll come out and just interact with all the other crabs around them. And they're really, they're really neat. We also have nearly constant sunshine here. There are some clouds here and there, but for the most part, it's constant sunshine. And because we have solar, we love this. We have been nearly full for the entire week we've been here. And it's still supposed to be beautiful the next couple days before we leave. Yeah, so we can use all our electric devices just with reckless abandon, we can even turn our fridge on electric during the day and we have enough electricity to come in to power the fridge. We usually have to run our fridge on propane. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice we're saving money on propane. Something else we love about staying on the beach and probably this beach in particular is there's just a ton of room. The beach is really wide and it's incredibly long. And even though there are other people staying on this beach too, the space between you know each person staying here is really big so even though the beach is wide open you really feel like there's a lot of privacy because the the noise from the waves and the noise from the wind makes it so you can't hear like nope. anything you can't hear anything from anyone else and they can't hear you another thing we really appreciate here on this beach in particular i don't know if all beaches have this um, probably a lot of popular ones do, but is the police presence. We see at least two or three officers driving up and down the beach throughout the day, and I've heard that they also drive at night, but we're sleeping, so we don't know. Yeah. And having that police presence makes, me, makes us both feel really oh, safe. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when you're staying kind of in, you know, wide open, like the nearest town is a little ways away, yeah. so it's nice. Very nice. Another huge pro for us is that there are permanent trash receptacles all over on this beach, which is really nice because typically when we're boondocking somewhere, you know, we're out in the middle of nowhere in the forest and there's not going to be trash cans anywhere. So we've got to drive into town and take our trash with us to throw it away. But here we just walk it on down to the trash receptacle, and toss it in. And finally, the absolute best <laughs> part about staying on the beach is how much fun Sweetie has. She has an absolute blast all day long, playing in the water, chasing the birds, chasing the waves, biting <laughs> at the waves, running in the sand. She has so much fun. Yeah, we definitely have a water dog. She just loves going into the water. 
and just having a blast. There's so much wide open flat area for her to just run around, play with the frisbee, <laughs> just run with us, get in the water. It's, yeah. it's awesome. She loves it. So the beach has been a great place to stay, but there are some downsides. And the biggest one of that is the sand. Sand everywhere. Oh my gosh, there's sand everywhere in the RV. <laughs> you track it in on your feet, Sweetie tracks it in, the wind blows it in through the screens. There's just sand everywhere. It's always on the floor, so you can always feel it on your feet. Sand just kind of collects in the most random areas. We've, yeah. got, it, we've got it on our bed sheets. Um, Overnight, it just seems to collect on our computers. Uh, things that have hinges now that now have sand in the hinges. Yeah, uh, it's the, terrible. yeah, there's sand in the truck. It's just there's sand everywhere. It's weird because we have um, no CM netting screens, and it's not weird. even no SAMs can get through them. Yeah. But the sand is so fine. The it, the wind just blows it right in through through the. Uh, screens. It's crazy. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know no what noceums are, they're super tiny mosquito-like bugs. Really tiny. Because you can't see them. No see yep. So we have screens that they can't even fit through. That Jenny installed. Yep. <laughs> uh, and you can check the link on our website for her installation of that. Yep. Another big con for us is the wind. The wind is really nice during the day. It's nice and calm. It's not too windy. I guess, <laughs> but at night, not every night, but a lot of the time, the wind gets so strong, we can't even open our front door without the wind blowing it back closed. Let alone have the awning out. Yeah, and the awning can't go out most of the time. About halfway through the day is when the wind starts to really pick up. Yep. But the mornings, the wind is really calm, it's really nice, it's a nice gentle breeze. But yeah, at night, it's insane. You go outside yeah. and it's just constant large wind. I don't know how fast it is, but it's crazy. It yeah. blows sand everywhere. It gets in your eyes and your mouth. <laughs> I have sand in my mouth right now. More sand cons. <laughs> More sand! Sand! <laughs> and another con to staying on any beach is going to be the high humidity and salty air. So it's, it's always humid here and in the heat, you know how humidity makes heat worse. And when the temperature starts to drop at night, the high humidity means a really high dew point. So water just basically condenses on everything. You feel sticky, the bed feels sticky, your pillow feels sticky, everything. The tables, the countertops, yep. everything. Yeah, so that can be really annoying and we can't run our air conditioner since we're boondocking. So yeah, the humidity is annoying. And the salty air is making a lot of stuff that hadn't rusted yet start to rust. So. You know, we're seeing corrosion on a few parts of the, not, like the frame of the truck is starting to corrode a little bit. Not in a bad way, but that rust wasn't there before we got here and now it is. And there's some parts on the RV too that have started to rust that didn't have any rust on them before we got here. And also for any of you out there that wear glasses, seeing glasses or reading glasses or anything, no matter how many times you clean them, even if you don't do anything that's going to get them dirty, you don't touch them, they have a film yeah. of what I can only assume is, is salt. salt. Yep. Our windows, them. yeah, our windows are like that too. And the windshield on the truck and the windows on the truck and the side mirrors Everything. all have that exact film she was just talking about. And we're pretty sure it's just condensed salt. And just like with nearly anywhere you stay, bugs are always a con. And here, 
because we're south, we're in Texas, where it doesn't really freeze very often, the mosquitoes have got to be three times as big as they are where we're from in Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And they have biting flies here and sand flies? Is that what they're called? I have no idea. I, I don't know. They have biting flies here. Bugs are constant and it's, it's even it's worse terrible. by the beach because of the high humidity. There's, yeah, when, and when night falls, it's just crazy mosquito. You don't want to be outside yeah. when, when you, the night falls here. You go out, do what you need to do, and you get back in. So with all that being said, the pros and the cons, how I feel personally staying on a beach is it's really cool to do, uh, especially the first time, but I wouldn't want to stay here permanently or for like really long term. But for short term, every now and then, I think it's really cool because it's just beautiful, it's calming, and it's just fun. But the sand, the humidity, and the salty air makes it so I definitely wouldn't want to live here or stay here long term. How I, do you feel? Oh, I agree. It's, it's really nice staying on the beach. I love watching the waves. I love listening to the waves. I love seeing the wildlife. But by far the worst thing is the sand. And that's something we're definitely gonna have to take into consideration if we're ever considering staying on the beach again. Even though we have less cons than we have pros, the cons are pretty big things for us. So. Yeah, they really are. Well, the cons are more of like that stuff that you just have to deal with all the time, yeah. every day. <laughs> so while the pros are really cool, they're not as like long lasting as the cons are. Even though we're not likely to stay on a beach again, for very long. Um, there are some things to do around here. There's a fish, a fish hatchery that we're gonna go see called uh, the Sea Center. And then there's also a boardwalk that has some really cool things we're gonna do on it. But first we gotta clean Sweetie's ears. So Sweetie's had an ear issue for about a week now. We thought it was ear mites, but we took her to a vet here in town and it's actually a yeast infection in her right ear. So we have to clean it out twice a day. Well, we clean it once a day and then we apply an ointment to help kill the yeast twice a day. So she hates it, but we've got to do it. And this is us taking care of our dog. This is her least favorite part. This is the, this is the cleaning part. All right, ready? Yep. I'm just gonna do it fast. Yep, yep. Got a lot in there. Nope, nope. Come here, sweetie. Yep. Will you push her butt? Yep. Yeah, does that feel good? Come on. Oh, your ear is looking so good. It is looking so good. Did you get it? Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. We know, we know, good girl. We're sorry. I love you. There's a whole bunch of hermit crabs in here. You know, tickle it on the on the side only. Go ahead. You can feel the tentacles. Whoa. Oh, big boy. I, it, yeah, it is. Big brother, huh? It is slightly grippy. So, 
each exhibit is going to be deeper and deeper into the water. This one is the salt marsh, which is described as where salt water meets land. And these are the types of fish and different animals you'll find in the water here. Stingray, there's a stingray back here. Look, 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 look. It's a little bitty. Oh, it's a bitty. <laughs> David, this guy's walking with the thingies. He's walking with the thingies. Okay, wait, wait, wait till it, wait till he calms down. Watch, they're like, see those spikes that are hanging down? Watch him. He's going. He walks with them a little bit. It holds him in place. See? <laughs> oh, what's this one over here that's hiding its head? It has to. This one is the coastal bay. And to give you reference for about how deep these fish live. They've built a pier, resembling a pier, and they live about this deep into the water, which is really cool. It's where a lot of fishermen hang out. This tank represents the jetty, which is still considered coastal area, but the fish are much bigger. And now we know why there are so many fishermen on the coast where we're staying, trying to fish. These are huge! This exhibit is still considered shallow waters. It's uh, the near shore waters. It goes out kind of near where like the oil rigs will be, where it's not super deep, but it, it does start to get deeper. There are some eels in here, and uh, I've, I spot two redfish, and this place is known for their redfish hatcher hatchery, which is really cool, because this is a hatchery after all. This one is the gulf so everywhere else out in the water the deeper part is all of this i am in awe <laughs> these fish are huge i don't swim in water that has fish in it and this is why <laughs> look at how shiny it is you ready yeah you gonna stick your hand in the box yep It's like a skull. Is that is that a shark's head? Or, oh, it's an alligator head, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. You can lift it up. Oh. Right <laughs> yep. <laughs> Here at the Texas Sea Center, they produce 15 million red drumfish a year and 10 million spotted sea trout. And they just started um, making flounder also. Um, and they didn't make a whole lot of them last year. I think it was a uh, hundred thousand or so. That number I'm not sure of, but they, they just started making them. So uh, that's a lot of fish. You're talking like 25 million fish per year that they release. Um, into the Gulf. Yeah, in, yeah. In, just directly into the Gulf. And the reason they do this is because back in the 80s, there was just a massive decline in the number of redfish. Uh, I think I read a chart that said there was like 100 million redfish in the Gulf. Uh, in the 70s and then by the early 80s there was only 10 or 20 million so there's just a huge decline in the number of redfish due to overfishing mainly by humans so they're basically just trying to keep the correct number of redfish and spotted sea trout and flounder southern flounder southern flounder yeah in the gulf they don't want them to be fished to extinction and uh, just because in the area fishing is a there's just a huge economy in the area around fishing mm -hmm. so people you know make their living doing this the government gets a lot of money from taxes and such so they're just trying to keep the economy going keep these fish from going extinct so all this talk and all this looking at fish has made us incredibly hungry for seafood so we're getting seafood right oh yeah okay Bourbon Street and it is delicious. <laughs> it, the presentation on it wasn't as spectacular as David's meal, but he and I both liked mine more. <laughs> it's delicious. It was great. It had, um, it had sausage, crawfish, shrimp, and crab. 
and a, a creamy Cajun sauce. So yeah, it was great. <laughs> and I got the Redfish Mardi Gras, which I don't really care about food presentation on it, but it did look really good. Uh, I only care about taste really with my food. And while I did like Jenny's pasta a lot better, uh, my fish was really good too. And I just wanted to get something that was from that hatchery we just went to. I ate the redfish, and that's what they make there. So I was like, I want some redfish. I want to know what this is like. But it was really good. Jenny. What? Don't tell me you're nervous to get on a Ferris wheel, are you? Shut up. Over the water, and it's tall. It's, it's, it's only over the water in the way that the whole boardwalk is over the water. Yeah, I'm nervous just walking on it. Jenny. What? Are you nervous on a Ferris wheel? Of course I'm nervous on a Ferris wheel. I'm nervous on everything. I'm just nervous. I'm just nervous. I'm always nervous. <laughs> I won't rock, okay? Don't even think about it. I won't, rocking. I swear I won't. Don't even think about it. You are hilarious. I didn't know you were afraid of Ferris wheels. I'm not afraid of Ferris wheels. BS. <laughs> okay, so I'm not typically afraid of Ferris wheels, but I've never been on a Ferris wheel over the sea. That death grip. This isn't a death that, grip. that betrays you. This isn't a death I'm not afraid, Death Grips Bar. So, believe it or not, we really just went there to ride the Ferris wheel. <laughs> <laughs> that is the only ride that we ended up going on, but. Jenny was so terrified of the Ferris wheel anyway that I'm not sure she could have handled any of the other rides. Maybe the carousel. I would have been right. just fine on any of the other rides. Yeah. But the reason that I was so scared on the Ferris wheel at first is because it went faster than I expected <laughs> at first. Yeah. And, it, and it started sooner than I expected. So I was a little scared, but the rest of it was perfectly fine. Stop being a jerk. <laughs> but with that, we're gonna go ahead and call it a night, head back to the RV and yeah. Go to sleep. Go to sleep, yeah. So if you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want more, go ahead and subscribe because our journey is just beginning. Night. And we'll catch you guys later. <laughs>